Hello everyone, this is the Gaming Cat here, and I was looking around at B-movie stuff on the internet today, and I found a Ken X Reader fan fiction. So I decided to read it because I have nothing better going on today. Enjoy. A new kind of yogurt night with a distinct lack of bees. By Oh My Gosh, What a Scream. Narrated by the Gaming Cat. The yogurt tub is too big for just one person, yet he still sits there, spoon in hand, and eats it. Upon a park bench he rests in solitude, his eyes trained towards the skyline, no longer hazy with a noxious smog of car fumes, of burned petrol, and of stinking fire. Instead, it is clear once more, Trees' rejuvenated leaves returning, darkened silhouettes against the pastel sky. Perhaps a long time ago now, he would have been sharing this evening with someone. Someone special. The name Vanessa lingers on his lips, festers on the very tip of his tongue, an unhealed wound. Blood congealed over, oozing, still raw and painful and red. If he were to describe himself, as he so often finds himself doing, it took a lot of time and effort to make resumes as stellar as his own. He'd say he's a beast of a man. A certain cut above the rest of them, someone special, someone important. Not someone who could be set aside, not someone who could be replaced, not someone who could be swapped out for a bee of all things. A bee! A goddamn bee! And not just any bee, oh no, the idiot who tried and managed to somehow sue the entire human race! For honey! HONEY! And, as if that wasn't enough, that bee had to go and snatch up his girlfriend with his tiny little sticky grabby hands. Disgusting bug hands! All his legs! His fuzzy little body, his stupid antenna, he was a bug for fuck's sake. A bug! And Vanessa had picked that buzzy little insect over him. A fully grown human male. That bee could have killed him with his very severe and most certainly life-threatening allergies. But Vanessa hadn't cared one bit. She'd become enamored with that talking bee on instinct. Love at first sight, his mind supplied, and he tried to suppress a gag. He doesn't even want to think about what that bee has over him. He doesn't even want to ask how a relationship between a human and a bee would work. So, just like that, he'd been wiped out of Vanessa's life. And sure, there were a few incidents here and there. Like the time he did almost burn her house down with an impromptu flamethrower he created out of an aerosol can and a lighter, but that wasn't really such a big deal. If anything, it showed his creativity, his sharp intellect, his endless wit, the way he always managed to think on his feet. And besides, fire is cool. If anything, it was a good job that Vanessa had ditched him. His many talents obviously weren't appreciated with her, and if she wants to fuck bees, then, in all honesty... Ken wants no part of that. So, for the most part, he moves on. For sure, he has his moments. Like when he first saw that damn bee's name emblazoned right beside Vanessa's on the front of her brand new reopened shop. That had stung, truly. To see the evidence of his replacement so blatantly stated like that, to see just how easily Vanessa had managed to wipe him from her life. But he had gotten over that, eventually. He had moved on. He was getting better, he'd stopped crying himself to sleep now, at least. But it was the little things that would catch him out now. Yogurt night, specifically. One of his weekly rituals. Something that he had always done, long before Vanessa, and something that he would continue to do, even if the sight of a pot of yogurt felt like a kick to the teeth. However, he was determined to soldier on, grit his teeth through the aching of his heart, and to eat his goddamn yogurt like a man. But it's hard to sit there alone. Especially when, after the bees have returned to their work, everyone seemed to be outside these days. 
The world was alight, not just with the rebirth of flora that spanned candy floss light across the city, but also the people. Everything was so damn busy now. Always there were people outside, and more often than not they'd be in pairs. Friends, lovers, all together. Groups of people, smiling, laughing, enjoying one another's company. Yet here he is, alone. Just he, himself, and his trusted pot of yogurt. There he sits, face growing dark under the lengthening shadows, and there he stays. He stays until the sun dips west, slipping lower and lower down the firelit sky, slipping down to streaks of lilac and pink, melting into flames of red and orange and vanishing into white-yellow light. He stays there until that is gone, until the color is bled out by the ever-coming night and the world is swallowed in silver gloom, pinpricks of starlight lighting up the blanket of night sky. Twiddling his spoon between clenched fingers, his jaw moving mechanically, as if he has been left on autopilot, more machine than man, he tries to forget about what has happened. The yogurt is good, but it is simply too much for one man to finish. He should have bought a smaller pot, but he'd grab the larger size on instinct. He'd been so used to sharing with someone that he hadn't even stopped to think. But that's when it happens. That's when he spies you, half-lit under the filter of moonlight, almost luminescent under a blue-tinged glow. You walk through the park. He cannot help but notice that you walk alone, your only companion the darkness of your shadow, falling behind you in spatters of starlight. You approach, and his throat goes dry. All thoughts of Vanessa, all thoughts of Barry, are instantly wiped from his mind. He catches your eyes, a haunted expression painted across his face that stops you in his tracks. Starstruck by this beautiful specimen of man, truly a god in a world of mere mortals, you are drawn to him, a moth to a flame, unable to stop the movement of your feet, the thudding of your heart. You approach him, taking the strongness of his jaw, the way the shape of his head reminds you of a rectangle. A sexy rectangle, you think to yourself. The broadness of his chest, and, as you take a peek down, the thickness of his hips. Damn, this boy is thick, you whisper to yourself, breath barely a murmur in the peaceful night. He's perfect, the man of your dreams. A dreamboat, a hunk. And, just looking at the confident smirk that spreads across his lips, he looks like a man who knows his way around a pair of chopsticks. Truly the most amazing skill that any man could have. You exhale, a breath leaving your lungs that you didn't even realize that you've been holding. Your breath puffs out from between parted lips, a ghostly mirage of smoke rising from the smile that begins to spread across your face. He's perfect, you think. He's the most beautiful creature on earth. You step towards him, inch your way closer to the park bench. It is as though the stars themselves have aligned for this meeting, for he shifts himself ever so slightly, leaving just enough room for you to slide yourself next to him. His thigh is warm against your own, and his breath ghosts against your cheek. He smiles. There is a pause, a flicker of electricity that thrums between you. He freezes, hand raising to his jacket. He rummages around for a bit, her brows furrowing in concentration. Then, with a quirk of his lips, he pulls a spoon from out of his pocket. You've always got to carry a spare yogurt spoon around with you, in case of emergencies. With hands that tremble only slightly, you accept the gift, holding the spoon like one would hold a royal scepter. You accept his gift with an incline of the head, accept his invitation of yogurt night. There the two of you sit, upon the park bench with the stars twinkling high above you. Just him, you, and your yogurt. Not a single bee in sight.